What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So we're going to be talking about another theory of mine regarding a Jeepers Creepers 5 opening and we'll be going over another tidbit of small information regarding a potential Jeepers Creepers 5 news from the director who did Jeepers Creepers 4, Timo Verensola, who has gone into some reasoning as to why he is not returning to direct Jeepers Creepers 5. Keep in mind, I did a video not too long ago telling you guys that he let a fan know on Instagram that he was working on, well, he put up a post letting us know that he was working on a commentary track for a soon to be released steelbook copy of Re Jeepers Creepers Reborn. I don't know who would want to pay for that, but whatever. The commentary track could be very insightful, but purchasing to hear it, I'm not into that beneath that post though he commented on a fan's response asking if there would be a jeepers creepers 5 he says he don't he does not know but he won't be involved either way now over on his website verinsola.com he has actually gone a little bit deeper into the reasoning as to why he won't be back he said he went over a recent post from the 4th of july a recent journal entry he said and what's next Nope, I won't do another Iron Sky. Unfortunately, that IP has been passed on to somebody else, and I'm no longer involved in that. Sad face. And nope, won't do another Jeepers Creepers. Got traumatized by the response on that one. Another sad face. Now, see, here's the thing. You got traumatized by the response on that one because of the fact that, to me, from my perspective and from the perspective of a lot of other people, you were in over your head. This was nothing but a money grab for you. This is honestly the opinion I now have, seeing how easily the movie is kind of just being forgotten by you. You want to go ahead and jump ship to the next IP. And it's like, okay, bro, people and what they were saying online about you, gotta have some, gotta have some more belief to it. There are some more assumptions that what they're saying is somewhat true because there's so many things that were coming out about this guy and the treatment of the iron sky projects and the abandonment of other campaigns where there was crowdfunding but then the crowdfunding never really turned into the money that it was supposed to, never turned into the project that the money was being invested in or supposed to be invested in so with this guy just easily departing the franchise and talking about he's traumatized from the response uh I can tell you, I can tell you right now, we're traumatized by the efforts put into Jeepers Creepers Reborn or lack thereof, because there is no logical thinking person who is going to come out of their way, logical thinking people who are collectively going to come out here and tell you, hey, you know what, job well done, man, we need you back for Jeepers Creepers 5, we need you back for Jeepers Creepers 6, we need you back, period, we need you to stay and keep doing your thing, no, your thing is terrible, we want you gone, and you being gone, it's best for business, because there was just so much uninspired about the fourth entry that it does make the third movie look like an Oscar worthy film. That's being a little bit dramatic because obviously, no, it literally does not. <laughs> but in comparison to what we have in four, a lot of people went back and appreciated the third movie that much more. At least you had Jonathan Breck and at least the makeup wasn't as atrocious as what we got in four because there's just, again, so much uninspired about this fourth entry. And for you to say, you're not doing another one because you were traumatized by the response. What were you expecting? This to me again tells me people have their heads in the sand when it comes to film feedback. How can you put out something like this and think it's going to going to end up being received well? And you yourself are someone who watches movies. You seem to know what good filmmaking looks like. How do you have so much delusion about your own skill that you can't tell that what you're doing is trash? And then confidently sign sign off stamp of approval stand by it you know i can get it to some degree because it's your art but this is art that i would have just kept in the drafts i wouldn't have put this out but that is why timo is not coming back he's citing trauma from the response on that one sad face according to his words i'll leave a link to this post so you can read it this is legitimately from him but i want to dive into this theory i have regarding the opening sequence of jeepers creepers 5 it's a theory in which getting rid of the creeper goes wrong it's set in 2024 23 years after the events of jeepers creepers 2 a lot of fans i know would love to see some returning faces besides trisha giselle Tubbs, and the taggarts so what if jeepers creepers 5 opened with the returning duo of izzy and Rhonda during this opening our first shot of the film would be the creeper's truck and it would go on long enough to convince the viewer that the creeper had already awakened since we see the classic rusty truck headed down east nine but the camera would pan inside the truck to reveal that the driver is izzy from jeepers creepers 2 and in the passenger seat is another character from jeepers creepers 2 Rhonda, who is skeptical skeptical about joining izzy on this since the last time izzy drove a car and was and it was related to the creeper he pushed Rhonda out and left her for dead now, 
Their conversation on this drive would reveal that they have successively stolen the creeper truck out of an impound location without being detected. They are planning to steal the creeper out of the Taggart barn and will proceed to drive the truck to a faraway location within the East Nine area so that they can chop up the creeper's limbs and bury them in individual dug up spots that Izzy has prepared. Izzy tried to convince Minxie and Double D to get in on this, but Minxie still believes it doesn't matter what anyone tries to do, and Double D basically said screw that plan because he wants to live. Izzy thinks Taggart is foolish for profiting off the creeper to support himself and his farm when he should have gotten rid of the body in the first place. So what I've done is I've included material about the character of Izzy that basically makes him a mouthpiece for some people within the fandom who have stated that they think the body shouldn't have been held up as a tourist attraction anyway. Rhonda doubts that this will work due to Minxie's claims, plus Minxie has started having visions again, and that's why Izzy came up with this plan in the first place, out of fear of, of what Minxie said is about to happen when it awakens and that the creeper will come after what it didn't have last time. They get to, they get to the Taggart barn, Taggarts are inside, sleeping through the night. Inside of the barn, our creeper still hangs over the bat of the hell sign, looking old and hollowed out. But the 23rd spring, of course, is quickly approaching. So Izzy retrieves the body with the help of Rhonda and loads the creeper into the truck. The taggers wake up. The taggers wake up and and notice that the creeper is missing after the two leave, but have no idea where it went or if it's actually awake or if someone took it. Of course, we know that Izzy and Rhonda just took it. Izzy and Rhonda head out to the location with the dug up spots to start burying the limbs. And before Izzy starts hacking the pieces with an ax, his phone rings. It's an unknown caller. When he answers, we hear Giselle's voice telling Izzy that's not going to stop it. So basically an entire conversation would ensue that parallels what went on in the diner between Derry and his initial encounter with Giselle in the first film. Izzy eventually hangs up on her, starts chopping up the limbs, buries each individual limb, and the last one buried is the head, which is still covered in the cocoon-like material that we saw at the end of Jeepers Creepers 2. Izzy is confident that this should prevent the 23rd spring. R Rhonda still is very skeptical, but Izzy is confident that this upcoming 23rd spring will not be a success for Mr. Creeper if he decides to wake up. Now, similar to my last opening, on their way back to a truck, to the Creeper truck, a swarm of crows have started to gather and are circling, with the swarm growing bigger and bigger with each passing second. Tension is swelling during this, and in the center of the swarm, we can see our creeper slowly appear until the creeper, until the crows slowly clear off, and we see the creeper completely revived and ready to strike for another 23 days. Looks stronger and better than ever. Izzy is dumbfounded by the sight of the creeper and tells Rhonda to run, which she of course does, and gets away for now. Izzy, since he decides to fight the creeper, dies for his efforts. The last shot of this opening is the creeper loading Izzy's body into the back of his truck, slamming the doors, and then riding down East 9 before the opening credits hit. You guys, let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, and you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and Threads as well, the new app Threads. You can message me there, of course. Let me know any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.